Colgate Tooth Powder's Theater of Romance presents My Man Godfrey. Yes, tonight and every Tuesday night, Colgate Tooth Powder brings you the Theater of Romance, featuring each week your favorite stories and plays especially adapted for radio. And here is your host of the evening, Arnold Moss, to tell you about this evening's presentation, My Man Godfrey. Good evening. Godfrey was the last of the perfect butlers. He was elegant, he was tall, slim, and handsome, not quite young, definitely not old, the very substance of aloof charm and gentility. There never was a butler quite like him before, and in all probability, there never will be again. Surprisingly enough, the Bullocks, for whom Godfrey worked, found this wonderful creature in the city dump. There was a scavenger hunt in progress. You remember those pre-war scavenger hunts? Someone made up a list of things that nobody wanted, and then everyone went out and tried to find them? Well, on the list that particular night, someone had had the hilariously funny idea of having everyone find a forgotten man. Now, Godfrey fitted that description precisely. A forgotten man. Irene Bullock found him sitting in the city dump near the harbor, staring into a small fire. Hello. Hope you don't mind if I share your fire, but it's cold out. Hmm. Gee, this fire smells terrible, doesn't it? You can choose your fires. I can't. Well, if, if you're going to be here tomorrow, I'll bring you over some kindling and logs and things. Go on, you're kidding. No, no, I'm not. You've got to have a better fire than this. What's a girl like you doing out here? What do you want? Well, I'll tell you. I'm on a scavenger hunt. I'm looking for a forgotten man. You looked sort of forgotten sitting there, and I, I thought you might be willing to help out. You see, I've never won anything, and I'd like to just once. Did you have everything else you needed to win? Yes, everything but the forgotten man. Well, then, you've got yourself a forgotten man. Oh, golly, thanks. Come on, let's get going before you change your mind. I guess we win, Mother. This is Godfrey. <laughs> This is my mother, Godfrey, and my sister, Cornelia. Oh, how do you do, Godfrey? So nice of you to come. I was glad to help out, Mrs. Bullock. Well, now, Miss Irene, you don't need me anymore, so I'll just say goodbye. Oh, no, no, wait. You did something for us. We've got to do something for you. What do you need most? Well, I could use a job, but I don't suppose you have any of those in your pocket, do you? Matter of fact, we're looking for a butler. Ours left today. Could you be a butler? Oh, don't be absurd, Irene. We know nothing about this man. We know all about the last one, Mother, and he got away with most of the silver. You surely wouldn't take a tramp like that into the house. Look at him. Why, he's perfectly disgusting. Oh, Cornelia, you're an awful stinker. Mother, he'd be a swell butler. I know he would. Oh, maybe, but it's so hard to tell in those awful clothes he's wearing. Well, it wouldn't do any harm just to try him, would it, Mother? Well, if you insist, Irene, advance him some money to get some decent clothes and put him to work at the house tomorrow morning. Thank you, Mrs. Bullock. I trust I shall be adequate. <laughs> While Godfrey's getting a butler's outfit together, let's listen to Del Charbot for a moment. Don't let your smile be a secret weapon. Let it be open, radiant, really bewitching. Let it be a smile that dazzles, a Colgate tooth powder smile. Yes, brush your teeth with Colgate tooth powder for a smile that dazzles. It's thrilling the way Colgate tooth powder removes dull, dingy surface film, leaving your teeth excitingly clean, revealing all their natural brilliance. And every time you brush your teeth with Colgate tooth powder, it leaves your breath fresh, sweet, and wholesome. You can depend on that, because scientific tests prove that Colgate tooth powder stops unpleasing breath that originates in the mouth, stops it instantly in seven cases out of ten. Well, how nice to know that every time you use Colgate tooth powder, it brings you a breath that's sweet and a smile that dazzles. What a wonderful setting for romance. Enjoy it tonight, won't you? Get Colgate tooth powder... Remember the name, Colgate Tooth Powder. And now back to the Bullock Mansion, where Godfrey is starting his first morning by taking the breakfast trays around. Good 
morning, Mrs. Bullock. Uh, is it morning? Uh, oh. Oh, well, good morning. Good morning, madam. I trust you slept well. Oh, my, but you're a beautiful butler. Where have you worked before? If you will permit me to put your breakfast tray here, Mrs. Bullock. Oh, yes. Thank you. Why, uh, I work for Mrs. G. Hopkinson Parks. She's a Mrs. John Bogart now. Did she give you a reference, Godfrey? No, there was trouble between us, so I left without it. Will that be all, madam? Oh, yes, thank you, Godfrey. Oh, and by the way, I, I think you're very handsome. You must tell me more about yourself. Good morning, Miss Cornelia. It's a fine morning. I'll draw your shades. Oh. What do you mean, barging in here like this before I'm awake? I brought you your breakfast. Oh, I couldn't touch it. I feel off, just off. It must have been the champagne. Don't think you're going to have an easy time with me, Godfrey. I'll run you ragged. I'll make you sorry you ever dreamed of coming here to work. Uh, your poached egg, miss. Oh, take it away. Just as you say. But let me tell you something, Miss Cornelia. You can't do anything to me... Nobody can do anything to me. When a guy's completely down and out, nobody can hurt him. I hurt you. Last night. No. It was only what you stood for that hurt me. I hurt myself. If that will be all, Miss Cornelia, I have to get on with Miss Irene's breakfast. Good morning, Godfrey. It's a beautiful morning, isn't it? Indeed it is, Miss Irene. Oh, I brought your breakfast. Good, I'm starved. My, you look wonderful. We were lucky to get you. It just goes to show, doesn't it, that you never can tell who's hiding behind a straggly beard. <clears throat> Will there be anything else, Miss Irene? Yes. Sit down and talk to me while I have breakfast. But I can't. I'm the butler. Well, I suppose it would be different if you were a regular butler, but you're not. You're a man in disguise as a regular butler, which makes you a romantic character. And as a romantic character, it's part of your duties to have breakfast with me. Now sit down at the foot of the bed. Well... There. Oh, you look very nice there. You must come often, Godfrey. It's not going to be fun buttling for this family. But it's a roof over your head and food to eat. And decent fires until you straighten out whatever's wrong inside of you. What makes you think something is wrong inside me? Oh, I just know it, that's all. It's an instinct, I guess. Like my knowing... I'm in love with you. Oh, now, see here. You, you aren't awake yet. Don't go jumping to any hasty ideas at ten in the morning. Oh, but I'm wide awake. As a matter of fact, I haven't been asleep at all. I've been lying here all night thinking about you. You see, I fell in love with you last night. Beard, ragged clothes, city dump and all. Mm. Well, I'm sorry if it annoys you, but I can't help it. Well, I'm afraid I must get back to the kitchen. Will that be all, miss? Yes, Godfrey, that will be all. For now. <laughs> You have another cup of coffee, Mr. Bullock? Uh, uh, no, thank you, Godfrey. Oh, good heavens. Something wrong, sir? Uh, 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 no, Godfrey. I, I'll be all right in a moment. It was just something I read there in the paper. I always recommend a good strong shot of water after reading something disagreeable in the paper, sir. Godfrey, I am in a mess. I didn't mean to get into it, but I did, and, well, now I don't know how to get out of it. But they're not going to get me. They're not going to get me. Uh, the, um, the papers are full of rumors of a scandal in the Hanoverian Bank and Trust Company. Uh, that is your bank, isn't it, sir? Yes, that is my bank, slowly being forced to the wall. Bad investments. Uh, nothing crooked, you understand? Oh, I understand perfectly, sir. Uh, now, uh, I uh, don't want this to get around, Godfrey. I appreciate silence in those around me. Uh... Let me give you a little something as a slight gesture of appreciation. That isn't necessary, Mr. Bullock. I'm your butler. You're already paying me very well for loyalty. <sighs> Thank you, Godfrey. I can already see you're a better man than most I've met in my lifetime. Thank you, sir. And now, if you'll excuse me, I have some silver to polish. Hello, Godfrey. What are you doing? Uh, polishing the silver. Isn't that rather obvious, Miss Irene? Let me help. No, 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 no. That isn't necessary. Oh, but I'd like to. Really, I would. I can pretend it's our silver. Yours and mine, Godfrey. And that we're getting it ready for a party we're giving. Godfrey, have you ever been in love? 
Now and then. Well, you seem very aloof and unapproachable on the whole subject, I must say. That's because I'm a butler and you're the lady of the house. If you were the parlor maid, then that would be a different story. What would happen if I were the parlor maid, Godfrey? Well, I'd probably kiss you in the pantry and take you to the movies on Thursday nights and Saturday afternoons and hold your hand in the back row. Well, as long as we're in the pantry, couldn't you sort of pretend I was the parlor maid? I'm afraid I am a thoroughly realistic butler. You don't believe that I'm in love with you, do you? Or is it that you don't care? You don't care that I'm unhappy all the time and that I cry when you walk in and out of rooms and don't look at me? Oh, certainly I care. I want to go right out and buy you a teddy bear and a lollipop. Oh, Godfrey! <laughs> Hello, Godfrey. Cleaning the silver, I see. Is there something I can do for you, Miss Cornelia? No, thank you, Godfrey. I was just kind of lonely upstairs, so I thought I'd come down and talk to you for a while. I'm very busy. I won't interfere with your work. You don't like me, do you, Godfrey? Not particularly. That's regrettable, because I like you very much. You're very handsome, Godfrey. Yeah, I'm smart, too. Don't forget that. You're not going to take me in, you know. Take you in? Why, whatever do you mean? Miss Cornelia, I knew a very beautiful woman once. Spitting image of you, as a matter of fact. And believe it or not, she once said almost the same thing to me that you just said. That's why it's no good gazing up at me with those big blue eyes. I've been vaccinated, sister. In what way? The hard way. I married the lady. Married? You didn't tell us you were married, Godfrey. Well, you never asked. And if you had, I would have told you it was none of your business. <gasps> I'm not married now. You see, the lady wanted another man. Her kind always does, sooner or later. This whole conversation isn't flattering to me. No, it isn't, is it? I'll make you eat those words before I'm through with you. I wouldn't bother trying. There's so many more susceptible men in the world. And uh, now, please excuse me. I must put the silver away. Oh, Godfrey. <laughs> I came home early from the party just to see you. You know what? I went around all evening carrying a torch. And everybody that saw me said, Look at Irene Bullock carrying the torch for Godfrey. What do you think of that? I think you'd better go to bed. Mm, I don't want to go to bed. I want to sit here all night looking at you. Gee, I got it bad, haven't I? Yeah, come on, take my arm. I'll help you upstairs. All right, Godfrey, I... Oh! Oh, thunderation. You know she'd pass out. I'll have to carry her upstairs. Now then, Miss Bullock, right into the shower for you, clothes and all. Oh! Hey! Hey, that's cold water! Why, you little faker, you let me lug you up those stairs thinking you passed out. What was the only way I could get you to do it? You didn't pass out at all. I haven't even had a drink. Oh, Irene, why do you do these things? What gets into you? Oh, Godfrey, you're so naive. Godfrey, what do I have to do to make you kiss me? If you'll excuse me, Miss Irene, no, I... No, ha- I won't. I won't excuse you. And if you won't kiss me, I'm going to stand right here and cry all night. And then I'll get sick and I'll go to the hospital and die and you'll never see me again. Irene, people do not die because they don't get kissed. Now, please, let's be logical about it. When was there ever anything logical about love? Oh, Godfrey, don't you think you could ever love me even a little? Godfrey, maybe it's a lot of fun for you to walk all over me. Maybe you get a kick out of it, but it isn't much fun for me. Oh, Irene. Irene, don't you understand? I'm all wrong for you. You should have someone young, the way you're young, full of eagerness and gaiety and fun. I'm none of those things. I'm a guy who stuck his fingers in the fire once and got burned. All right, Godfrey. All right. We'll say no more about it. But would you kiss me just this once? I'll never ask you to again. I promise. All right, my dear. That was a beautiful kiss, Godfrey. It got away from you a little, though, didn't it? You little witch. Oh! Oh! 
Uh, what is it, Mrs. Bullock? What's wrong? <laughs> my pearls are gone. Godfrey, someone's stolen my pearls. Oh, Godfrey. Now, now, control yourself, madam, please. Please. They're, uh, insured, aren't they? Uh, uh, why, why, yes. Yes, they are. I never thought of that. I just got so upset when I saw the bedroom window was broken. I'd left the pearls on the dresser because I was going to wear them this evening. Yes, well, if you'll excuse me, madam, I'll call Mr. Bullock at once so he can notify the insurance firm. Godfrey, did you steal Mother's pearls? Of course not. Well, I thought you might have. You seem to have a lot of money lately. And I've been sitting in the living room listening to those horrible insurance men asking all sorts of questions about you. They think you did it. Well, I didn't. Of course, it's perfectly all right with me if you did, you know. I'll stand by you. I'll wait at the prison gates. Irene, in heaven's name, will you get this through your head? I did not steal the pearls. Oh, Godfrey, shout at me some more. I've never seen you so furious before. You're so wonderful, Godfrey. You could steal all the pearl necklaces in the world, and it wouldn't matter to me. I did not... <sighs> yes, Miss Irene. Thank you, Miss Irene. And now, if you'll excuse me, your father wants a brandy and soda. Is that a brandy and soda in your hand, Godfrey? <coughs> uh, how did you know that was what I wanted? I thought it was what you needed, sir, with all your trouble and everything. Well, what do you mean, my trouble? Well, sir, with conditions as they are at the bank, it, it seems to me a great many people might suspect you had... Uh, shall we say, hypothecated the necklace yourself. Of course, that would be a silly thing to do, but you know how people are. <laughs> yes, I, I should say that would be a, a silly thing to do. Yes. You know, sir, if I had, uh, uh, shall we say, hypothecated the pearls under those circumstances, I think I'd return them pretty darn quickly, sir. Godfrey, who the devil are you? Your butler, sir. You're not a Department of Justice man, are you? Oh, no, I'm... I'm exactly what I claimed to be in the beginning, a forgotten man. And I guess in my own way, I'm trying to keep you from becoming one, too. The pearls will be put back, Godfrey. And thank you. Oh, and uh, since you're in need of money, sir, I think I can loan you enough to help you out at present. Will you do that for us? Yes. <laughs> you, you don't seem surprised to hear me say I can. I might as well admit it. I know who you are, Godfrey. I've known ever since the insurance men were here. They naturally had to look up everyone in the house. I didn't say anything to you because it was your secret and I respected it as such. <laughs> it does give you a funny feeling, though, to have one of the richest men in the country working for you as a butler. Why are you doing it, Godfrey? Well, Mr. Bullock, when my wife walked out with another man, I lost interest in living, even in dying. I just felt numb, and I wanted to lose myself and my identity so no one would pay any attention to me at all. And then Irene came along, and, well, I felt differently about everything. I suppose you'll be leaving us, now that we know your secret. Oh, yes. For one thing, you can't afford a butler anymore, and I can't afford to be one. I'm going back to live my life again, and this time I'm going to make it a good life. And now, if you'll excuse me, sir... There's something I have to talk to Irene about. Irene! Irene, I've been hunting all over for you. What are you doing sitting out here in the park? Everyone was looking for you at dinner. I just came out here to sit a while. You, uh... You didn't come into the pantry all day. I've outgrown that stuff. Mm -hmm. I, I missed you. I had something to tell you, and I particularly wanted to tell you in the pantry. We'll say goodbye in the living room, Godfrey. It's the place to say goodbye to Mr. G. Hopkinson Park of Wall Street and Fifth Avenue. Irene, look at me. You I... really must excuse me. I'm sure Mother wants me. Irene, you said you loved me, remember? No, I didn't. I told Godfrey I loved him, but you aren't Godfrey. I don't know what you mean. I think you do. Godfrey was a forgotten man. He was mine. I found him at the city dumps. He had nothing, no money, no clothes, no food. And I had all those things. But I was forgotten, too, because... Well, because I had no one to love me in the way I wanted to be loved. We balanced each other, Godfrey and I. We made a lovely couple. I'll miss him very much. 
Good night, Mr. Paul. Irene, don't. Don't you walk out on me, too. Another woman did that once and almost destroyed me. I thought that was the end of love for me, but you found me where she left me and took me in. You gave me back courage and ideals and faith in people. Irene, I love you. I want to marry you. I don't want your lousy money. I don't care two cents for your lousy money. All right, we won't touch it then. We'll hire out as a couple. I'll be the butler and you can be the upstairs maid. You... You do that for me? I'd do anything for you. I'll live any way you want to live. You see, it doesn't matter who we are or where we live. As long as it's together. As long as it's you who's making the breakfast coffee and holding out your arms to me at night. Oh, Godfrey, I can't believe you really love me. I'm afraid it will take you all the rest of your life to convince me. <laughs> the prospect enchants me. Well, then, let's go home and tell the family. I can't wait to go up to Cornelia and say, Cornelia, have you met my man, Godfrey? Come on, darling. Just a moment. Uh, as long as I'm still a butler, would you mind if I pretended you were the parlor maid? Just for a moment... Oh, Godfrey. The curtain has gone down on my man Godfrey. And in just a moment, Arnold Moss will tell you about next week's play. But first, when you're close, very close to someone you love, be sure you have a breath that's sweet and a smile that dazzles. That's what you can expect when you use Colgate Tooth Powder, because Colgate Tooth Powder removes the dull surface film from your teeth, revealing all the natural brilliance of your smile. And at the same time, it assures you of a breath that's sweet and inviting. Yes, those are facts. For scientific tests have definitely proved that Colgate Tooth Powder stops unpleasing breath that originates in the mouth, stops it instantly in seven cases out of ten. So simply brush your teeth night and morning and before every date, with Colgate Tooth Powder, for a breath that's sweet and a smile that dazzles. That's it, Colgate Tooth Powder. And now, Arnold Moss. Our play next week is the famous comedy drama of the girls who live and hope and dream of seeing their names in the lights of Broadway, Stage Door, by George S. Kaufman and Edna Ferber. Until next Tuesday, then, when Colgate Tooth Powder's Theater of Romance will present Stage Door. This is your host, Arnold Moss, saying good night and wishing you love, happiness, and romance. In tonight's play, Godfrey was played by Peter Donald and Irene by Peggy Conklin. The radio adaptation was written by Gene Holloway. The music composed and conducted by Ben Ludlow. And the production was directed by Mark Sloeb. is the 14-day palm olive plan. Yes, what is the 14-day palm olive plan? It's the biggest beauty news in years. Doctors tested this plan, proved it brought lovelier complexions to two out of three of all the women tested. Here it is. Wash your face with palm olive soap. Then massage for a full 60 seconds with palm olive's lovely soft lather. Then rinse. Do this three times a day. Easy to do, yet 36 doctors proved this palm olive plan brings a lovelier complexion to two out of three women. No matter what type of skin you have, dry or oily, the 14-day palm olive plan works. So get palm olive. See what palm olive can do for your skin in only 14 days. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>